What do you do when you arrive in Florida at four o'clock in the afternoon? And realize you don't have a reservation. Hey y'all, I'm Jimmy. And I'm Lisa. The kids are all grown up. Now it's our turn to have fun. So now you'll find us camping. Yes, you will. So that's exactly what happened to us. We had a reservation. Everything was lined up perfectly. Somehow we looked at the calendar wrong and left South Carolina a day, a day early. early. Of course, it was Thursday afternoon at four o'clock in February, which most of you probably know is peak season for Florida. And there's no spots available. We did get lucky in frantically calling around trying to find anywhere. Well, first of all, let me back up. So we did call the park we were supposed to arrive at the next day just to make sure they couldn't fit us in for a night earlier and they were booked. So then the frantic calling any RV park in the area, trying to find someone that could keep us overnight. We got lucky and found Lake Pan RV Village, which was formerly a KOA and they had a spot for us to stay overnight. And they closed at six o'clock. And we were about 56 minutes away and it was 5 p.m. So. The lady was nice enough to tell me she, of course, would leave a packet hanging outside for me if we got there after six, but hopefully we'd get there in time. So did we make it in time? We did make it in time. As I walked in the front door at one minute till six, I was greeted by, you must be Lisa. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, they got us in for a pull through full hookup site. She said it very sadly that if I had good Sam's, which we do, the best she could do was a pull through, full hookup, cable, Wi-Fi, everything like that, with the Good Sam's discount would be $49.50. At this point, I don't care if it was $149.50. I was tired and ready to get to where we're going. Right, and so $49.50, hey, that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm there. So we got there right before closing. We got pulled in, we got parked. The site was super long. Um, we did end up unhooking that night because we ran and grabbed some uh, dinner, but we still had room to park the Fusion, the truck in front of it. We could have put our patio down and probably parked another car behind that if we'd had everything and, and wanted to do that. That's how long the pull through site was. And each of the sites in the area we were in had a concrete pad and a picnic table. So that was really nice, especially for $49.50. So we figured while we were there, we'd go ahead and try to get a quick review in. Um, so here we go. So as you enter the park, which by the way is less than a mile off the interstate, which was a great thing. As you enter the park, on the left hand side, there were a couple of RV sites right at the front, but then beyond that, the next probably 10 to 12 sites down the left hand side were what they consider mobile home full-time sites. And then to the right is what's labeled on the map as overnight sites. That was us. Clearly more of the people on that side were not all overnight. We were one-nighters, but they looked to be, you know, maybe week, two weeks days. They weren't people that were going to be staying all season. Then behind those sites were the ones that were for people that were going to be the longer length of time. As we get up here to our site, you can see the two sites beside us. One of them emptied this morning. The other one stayed empty all night, but you can kind of see how long the sites are, how much room we have um, based on our unit, and you can see the picnic tables and the, and the concrete patios that are there. As we head on up to the office, you can see where we would slow down to pull in. Um, the office is on the right, and they had a nice pull-up area over to the side that would be out of the way. Of course, they weren't really busy when we were there, so no big deal. We were the only ones there. We weren't anybody's way. Um, and then we just kind of made a U-turn around behind the office, and that brought us up on the back side of our site. Nice, easy pull through, especially when you're tired of driving because, you know, we weren't supposed to be there. So as we head on down through the park on our quick little tour, on the right, we're going to approach the swimming pool, which seemed to be a very well kept area. There was a cover on it because it was very, I think it was in the 40s when we were there. So clearly nobody was swimming, but it didn't appear that the pool was sealed up for the season. Um, just beyond the pool was bathhouse. So we'll do a quick little walkthrough of that. Being as this bathhouse is in such close proximity of the pool, uh, it also shares a building with a laundry facility. Uh, I would assume this would be the place if you wanted to come and change before you went in the pool or change after a swim, this would where you would go. 
or if you were looking to shower after taking a swim and then get ready, also the bathhouse you would use, or if maybe you're just trying not to use your bathroom in your RV and you're coming to the bathhouse um, to use any of the facilities here, this one seems pretty close to everything. Uh, there's plenty of counter space, so if you're trying to dry your hair or whatever, there's that. Uh, each of the toilets has its own stall with a separate door and then the showers each have doors and they have a bench outside of the shower area to sit your clothes and belongings as well as a rack hanging in the shower to keep your shampoo and stuff. So that's a nice feature. As we come out of the bathhouse on the opposite side of the pool is um, a nice little area where we have picnic tables, uh, horseshoe pits, and shuffleboard courts so that all looks very nice and um, it was very clean over there yeah and then as we head on down we're headed towards the lake as the end of this street on the left down here at the end is what's called a deluxe camping cabin i imagine that's a full amenity cabin and then over to the right are the tent sites and they have two or four person sleeping cabins that are arranged down here um they do not have bathrooms, so they are just sleeping cabins, but there is a bathhouse located in the middle of all those cabins so that you do have facilities. Uh, as we get down here, you'll see there is a fishing pier and there are some boat docks. Um, it's kind of green down here, but again, this is probably not the time of year that people are in their boats, but it is an option that's here for you. As we circle back around coming up from the lake, um, back by the shuffleboard courts. On the back of the building where the bathhouse was is where the laundry facility is located. So I did run in real quick and just take a quick little view of what's in there. The pricing to do laundry is $2 per load. That's $2 to wash and $2 to dry. $2 to dry. Which isn't bad, $4 for a load. No, you'd have to do a lot of loads before it added up to being worth um, purchasing a washer and dryer. But if you're full time, of course, that makes more sense. We're not there yet, and we don't always have to do laundry when we're on the road, so it's not worth the investment to us. I'm not wearing dirty clothes. Just yet. I'll go to the laundry facility. Their facility here was very clean, and $2 a load, either way, wash or dry. And then right across from the laundry facility was cottages, is what they're labeled on the map. They all have screened-in porches, and I can't really tell you much more than that. Um, they look to be older, kind of concrete buildings, but they were well-kept and painted, and everything was neat around them. And then they back up to the rec hall, which again is located directly across from the office. Um, I don't know of any real activities that were going on other than there was a sign out front that said they offer breakfast in the morning. As you can see on the board, breakfast consists of eggs made your way, flaky biscuits, sausage gravy, southern country fried potatoes, toast and jelly, fresh brewed coffee, and orange juice. Then they have a special menu on the weekends, Saturdays, sausage and pancakes, Sundays, bacon and French toast. I don't think that's a bad deal for the $5 donation, which it is to get your um, breakfast. Now, I don't know if that's all you can eat or if you go up and pick what you want. Again, we weren't here long enough to really find out all the details, but I just think it's a nice option to have there. I can eat $5 worth of food. Even I can eat $5 <laughs> worth of food. I don't eat a lot. Of course, not much on their menu was keto friendly. So there is that, Thanks. but we could have eggs and bacon, maybe sausage, so we could make it work. Would it be worth it to you to have a home-cooked meal, a home-cooked breakfast for $5 a person? Especially on a day that you were maybe checking out and you didn't want to get everything dirty and have to wash it up. You could just run up there, pay $5, grab a meal, head back, hook up, and go home. Or a day you really weren't supposed to be there. Yeah, there's those days too. Comment below, let us know if $5 would be a good deal for you for breakfast. Oh, has anybody else got to a campground early? So how many of you, what he really wants to say, because somehow it's all um, <laughs> my responsibility. What he's really asking is, have any of you had messed up travel plans that have landed you somewhere without a reservation and we did look at walmart parking lots but all the ones we could find near where we were can't park there yeah no overnight parking so comment below also and let us know if you've been in this predicament because it was not a fun time for us it's our first time this has ever happened in 15 years of camping yes 15, 15 years. years many miles i've never gotten it wrong and i had the reservation we left early. We, we had... just left early. That's that's what the problem was. Because the night we stayed at Lake Pan, 
we had a reservation in South Carolina. So we, we weren't without a place to stay. We just left our, we just left South Carolina too soon. And she wanted to stay in South Carolina so she can go to Charleston and Savannah. And Savannah. So we went there, we stayed there so she can see all of this. And we woke up the next morning, she says, time to go. And I didn't think anything about it. And I, we left. I packed up and we left. So yeah. It happens. It wasn't fun. So as we round the office and leave the rec hall, you can see where we would be pulling in um, when checking in. And you know, right here beside the office, they do have an ice machine. Don't know if you caught it or not, but over to the left, they also have a propane um, tank, so you could fill up your propane. Propane. So you could fill up your propane. And then behind the office, they have another bathhouse. We didn't need to use it, but it is there if you needed it. Um, as we come back around, you'll see that we're on the back side of the pull-through sites to the right. And then on the left, there's back-end sites. Um, the ones on the left are 30 and 50 amp, but I believe all of the pull-through sites were 50 amp. And as we get behind the Fusion, you can see how much room we still had behind that. And you saw the front when we were on the other side, how much room we had up there. So they're it pretty big made, sites. It would have made a nice place to stay if we would have stayed for a couple of days. We could have put the patio down and enjoyed and relaxed. But Yeah, and it's right next door to Tom and Jerry's airboat rides. And they were um, pretty loud when they took off in the morning. Yeah, we could hear them in the morning. We didn't take advantage of going by there, but it might be a fun place to check out if you were staying there. We've had friends that taken has taken that trip. They said they loved it and they've seen a lot of the alligators up close. So something to look at if you ever make a wrong turn and end up at Lake Pan RV Park. As we get on down to the end of the pull-through sites and make a turn to the left, um, you will see the dumpsters off to the right. The dumpsters are there, which is great, but they will pick your trash up for you if you leave it at the edge of your site between 8 and 10 a.m. Uh, there is one back street here as you pass the dumpsters. This is the back side of the campground. If you'll notice over behind these sites is where the storage unit is or storage area is. Uh, and this site just kind of loops back around and ends up back at the office. So Lake Pan was uh, formerly a KOA and I don't know what happened there and it really doesn't matter. Um, they got us in very last minute. Thank goodness. It was only $49.50 with our Good Sam's discount for a full hookup 50 amp water electric sewer cable and they had Wi-Fi in the park. So in my opinion, that's a great deal. Um, and Our cell phone signal did work. Yes, we did good. have good cell phone. We signal. didn't check the Wi-Fi because we weren't there long enough. But the cell phone for AT and T was pretty good. So I don't know about Verizon or the rest of them, but AT and T was. We had three bars, I think. We were able to find places to shop or eat if 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 you wanted to do that. We just ran out and grabbed a quick dinner, so we didn't tour or you know drive around a lot. So if you're ever in Lake Pan, Florida, accidentally or, or on purpose, I uh, <laughs> would recommend. Lake Pan RV Village. Everything was very well kept. It was clean. The people were friendly and they were really awesome and got us in at the last minute, which meant a lot to us. So we will visit them again. We'll our, put them on our, oops, list. our oops moment turned into we found another great place to stay when we're in Florida. Where's your favorite place to stay when you're in Florida? Let us know. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Ring the bell if you want to be alerted for the next video. You don't want to miss it. Safe travels, y'all.